everybody welcome back to my channel I'm so excited to show you how I painted my white tiger with the blue eyes today this is a step-by-step -step tutorial there is a longer version available right now over on patreon um, but I'm gonna go over all the steps here the painting method is just a little bit quicker so I'm working on a 16 by 20 black primed canvas you can get one of these canvases at your local art store already um, primed with gesso or you can just take any canvas you have laying around and uh, I just did actually a few coats of regular black acrylic paint. Um, gesso works uh, really really well too it's actually the preferred choice um, and I'm coming in with black and white to make a nice mid-tone gray color here just to do the um, rough outlines of the top of his head and his ears and I'm using a number 11 filbert brush right here you can use any brush of your choice for this though you guys it doesn't matter you can use a, you know a liner brush if you want or a small flat brush a round brush whatever you feel comfortable with it's just roughing in and color blocking and getting those main um, highlights and shadow areas in. Now what I like about working on a black canvas is not only is it really really striking, um, you get that um, instant shadow and contrast so you're saving yourself a lot of time in coming in with um, a lot of black to to build up all of this. Um, so now I'm just gonna come in a little bit more and wiggle my brush in different ways to kind of make it look like his his hair is fuzzy and furry looking to get that texture and then you can see right there it looks kind of like a lightning bolt so the only thing that I found difficult about this painting um, was coming in with uh, all of the patterns all of his stripes and markings that takes some time so if you're a beginner painter you're gonna really want to take your time with this or maybe f uh, leave out some of the stripes Simplify it as much as you can for yourself. Find a, a copyright reference photo somewhere um, of an image that would be a little bit simpler for you to follow. Um, or you can just follow me along step by step. Pause the video at any time. You can slow it down if you like to. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And yeah, so I'm just going to keep coming in here with the white and the black. And making gray I'm not <clears throat> excuse me sorry <clears throat> we've got a lot of smoke over here on Vancouver Island coming in from the States and uh, most of my viewers are actually a lot of you that are watching and subscribing to my channel are from America so I just want to send out love thoughts and prayers for you guys um, and I I feel for you guys I hope that these fires are put out soon and um, that you guys get a whole lot of rain and uh, yeah so I'm thinking about you guys and we are actually inside indoors because the air quality is so bad outside right now that it's n not even healthy to be outside so if my my voice is a little scratchy during this video that's why um, but I was gonna say I'm not showing you guys my palette every time I pick up paint because it's very repetitive it's very simple it's just black and white and all you're doing is making um, dark gray or light gray by adding more or less of the white and I don't use a whole lot of water in my paintings the only time I want to use some water is maybe when um, I'm using my liner brush or my even tail fan brush and my my regular fan brush that's just to help make the hair look wispy so I'm coming in now around his face and the hair kind of goes out a little bit at the top and then it starts to go down and kind of come around but then it goes out just slightly off to each side of the canvas so I'm gonna block in where his eyes are gonna go right now and start working on his the bridge of his nose now if you guys have any trouble at all get intimidated by facial features um, my my tip and so many artists do this and you, pro you probably already know about this but just break things down into shapes so instead of looking at it as a nose that you're painting um, such as this right here to me kind of looks like and in the photo I was I was using uh, it looked like an hourglass so you could you know just break things down that are simpler for you to follow and you know the eyes are a circle or the ears are you know whatever it, it looks like to you a triangle a square that will really make it easier it just changes um, the way you approach things and how you look at it 
Um, I looked at a few different... Sorry, guys, my puppy's going nuts right now playing with the cats. Um, I looked at a few different reference photos uh, for this guy, and then I just did my own thing with it because I have a really hard time painting from photos nowadays, to be honest. I've been so free and intuitive as a painter in the last few years that it's really hard to go back to that. I just love being free when I paint. Um, so this was uh, kind of a challenge for me. Um, it's been different for me doing this uh, study lately on black canvases painting animals. Now this is my third of three that I've done and I'll add some links below if you haven't seen them yet. I did an owl first, then I did a lion and now this tiger and I've got another one on the go in my gallery right now. And yeah, so I'm just coming in with more highlights right here, working on his nostrils, getting the black line in there for the shape, and then coming down into the mouth area. Just using my filbert brush. I like a filbert brush because I have the straight, it has the straight ends on it, and then it's got the nice rounded end on, to, on, on it too, so I can make straight lines but then kind of curve and make them soft and rounded if I need to but yeah so this is my third one and I'm really really enjoying myself um, working on this series of black and white paintings I especially love adding the color to the eyes um, at the end that's what really is exciting for me and I think really brings the canvas to life um, I should say the fourth one I'm working on right now it's not going to have any color to the eyes though, it's a bit different, but it's still very special and uh, I think you guys will enjoy that one. So I'm just really working layer upon layer, one layer at a time here, not skipping any of those mid-tones, the light gray, the dark grays, and finally coming up to bright bright whites and I'm using titanium white you can use any white you want I'm also using Mars black but you can use any black uh, it doesn't matter it depends on how bright you want your highlights to be I just I've always been a big fan of titanium white um, you can tone it down if you want to if you want uh, more of a ivory or off-white you can tint your whites with um, yellow or orange or burnt sienna or red you know there's so many different things you can do um, and you can also make any gray you want with white and black so you don't need to waste money going to the art store and getting different shades all the different shades of of gray but if you want to that's fine and then it's already in a bottle there on hand ready for you um, I just don't feel the need to do that. I actually really enjoy mixing and making my own colors. I think it's fun. So I'm coming in with the stripe pattern on the bottom here, and it's very um, subtle and kind of indistinct. We want the main focus to be on his face, of course, and those eyes. Um, but you can see part of his body, so I'm coming in down there with the stripes, and they're different widths and thicknesses, and I'll be adding a little bit more um, white to them later on you'll see every time I add a layer it starts to dry and it's gonna dry a little bit duller and that's just what acrylic does that's <laughs> just an acrylic thing it's nothing you're doing wrong um, though if you have a gesso primed canvas it will help with colors so the if you have one to three coats of gesso before you begin a painting chances are your colors will stay as vibrant and as fresh and bright as when you first applied them so that's just something to let you guys know about that you might not I didn't know that for years because I was completely self-taught I didn't even read any books I just sat looked at pictures used my imagination didn't have the internet and um, yeah so I just I learned very slowly <laughs> and painted every single day So you can see I'm blocking in more of his patterns and his markings here. Starting to make it stand out a lot more by adding more paint. And I'm using just straight white here. And at times it's blending in with the layer underneath that's still a little bit wet, creating those shades of gray. 
and he's got a bright white marking on either side of his eyes. So I'm just going to come in and do that on the top, on the sides. He's got beautiful markings. I just think tigers are amazing. I'm really an animal lover. I, We have three cats. We have three ragdoll cats. Henry, Betty, and Greta, and we have a little palm chee. She's just about two years old. Her name's Tilly. You guys have probably seen her before, and I think she makes an appearance here and there in this video. So I'm just going to keep building up these highlights, guys, and it's pretty repetitive, so I'll just let you enjoy this without listening to me <laughs> repeat myself here for the next couple minutes, and I'll meet you back here for the next step. So of course we've got to add these little black lines down there for where his whiskers start and I'm just gonna lightly outline his nose and his mouth area and then tap in tap tightly together so that they're lines but they're kind of lumpy looking if that makes sense so they go in more towards the bottom there and yeah so we'll do a few of those lines for his whiskers and then we'll be coming in with a liner brush when we start actually adding his whiskers in there. And he's got a few little markings just on either side of his nose there. Just two little light gray kind of blobs. And then I'm going to come in and begin the tight markings between his eyes. So it's kind of like little tight zigzags up and down or little lightning bolts. That's what helps me approach it better. And then I'll be outlining, just defining where the highlights are and other little markings around his eyes. Now there's this patch, the marking right below his eye that ends up looking like it's another eye. So I play around with that a little bit just to kind of camouflage it a little bit more so it doesn't look like it's right there. It kind of looks like another eye. So I'm going to um, soften that after with gray. But it's not something you can leave out because it's how a tiger looks. It's one of their main markings under their eyes like that. And I'm going to make that a little bit darker right there, a little bit thicker, and then come in and just see how I kind of wiggle with the tip of my brush there and then I pull. So that part of it is kind of wobbly looking where the little bits of hair start coming out. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit more black in here, really just defining and getting all of the widths right and the shapes basically right, but I'm not stressing myself out too much about making it look perfect like a photograph. I am just painting it in my vision and how I see it and yours I'm excited to see what your guys this is gonna look like when you want to share what you've done with me please tag me on Instagram that's the best place uh, and I yeah I just love seeing all of your guys's versions and and your interpretations from my tutorials it's such a joy so I'm coming in with a mini or an yeah, I guess it's a mini fan brush. It's just got a really long handle um, with white and water. And it's especially effective when, see I zoomed in on it, when the bristles separate off into little uh, sections and chunks like that. Then you're able to get all those spaces in between and create multiple hairs at one time. You don't want um, too many solid looking areas or you're going to lose that 3D effect that you want. You want to see all the layers because that's going to give you that texture and um, the three-dimensional look. So he's got a shorter section of hair just right in front of either ear so I just do small little flicks and down here I'm going to make it look more like fur so I'm going to do short little flicks as there, there as well and then kind of tap it out and soften it, make it a little indistinct because again, we don't want that competing. We want it to look like it's a little bit more in shadow and softer down there. So I'm just gonna take a while to keep building up all these layers of hairs and bright highlights, more white. And 
And then I come in here with a little bit of gray and then a little bit more white right in there where it's going to be quite bright. You'll see me once in a while use my finger too, you guys, and that's just um, something that uh, is handy. I've always got them right there <laughs> quickly. I don't need to go for another brush. And that's just to tap out any rough lines or soften and make something look a little blurry or hazy looking. Again, these short little tiny baby brush strokes. Okay, I'm going to come in after adding this white with a little bit of gray now, right on the tip of my brush there, just a bit of black with a white, of course. And because he's got another stripe on that far side um, but I feel like it looks a bit too dark there even though I'm going by a photo it doesn't look right when I um, turn it into a painting so or bring that part into my painting so what I'm gonna do later on is come back with a little bit more white and just soften that I'm gonna work on his mouth his little chin here a little bit more and to find those lines again just little scoops and right on the bottom of his lip, on the top of the bottom of his lip there, there's little black dots and, and little patches. Now he's got a little pattern there, almost like little freckles. So I, that's what those little black blobs are. We'll soften those up with a little bit of gray and then pull out a few more of the whiskers there eventually. He's got little tiny hairs that begin to turn into the whiskers right here. And we start little... And then as they come out, they're going to get longer. So we'll be pulling longer, br longer brush strokes with a long liner brush would be the easiest for you guys, but you can use any liner brush that you want. I really love my long liner brush and it's very helpful for painting grass, painting hair. Um, sometimes I like to use it for painting um, trees as well, like branches and um, even the odd tree trunk. So just wiggling in quickly together and then he's got those a few little odd whiskers that start from either side of his cheeks so i'm really happy with how this is coming together at this stage um, it is quite normal to and even to this day and i've been painting for well over 20 years even to this day, I get to a stage during my paintings where I'm like, mm, I don't know about this one. This one might have to go into the recycling bin. It's just not working out. It looks weird. It's uh, kind of uh, abstract or just not right looking. Not that there's anything wrong with abstract, but that's not what I was going for. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I, I, I know that feeling. I recognize it. I had that when the first few years of painting and and then you know I used to just throw my paintings out and get mad and go through that that anger and frustration which I know all of you are if you're beginning at painting I know you guys can can relate to that and you've felt that many times you know one day I got tired of doing that and I'm like oh, I'm just gonna keep going with this what have I got to lose and let me just see if I can fix this and you know I just finished a painting one time I pushed through those negative feelings and at the end it turned out great and I kept doing that and I kept ignoring those my subconscious telling me that it wasn't working and uh, and I just realized that there's a process that you go through it's mid painting stage okay you guys and if your paintings are going to look wrong and weird and you're gonna want to throw them out or start over um, that's normal tell yourself when you get to that stage that that's right that, that that's the stage you're supposed to be at when it doesn't look right is when it's going well <laughs> I don't know if you guys can understand where I'm coming from but that is such uh, good advice to give you guys because it'll save you a whole lot of um, frustration and it'll save a lot of your paintings and it's really helped my students they've been very grateful for me to give them that little bit of advice because they've pushed through so many paintings and they're like, you know what, you were right. After I finished it, it it looked great. And it's just normal for mid-process with your paintings for them to not look 
right? So just keep going, basically, is what I'm saying. Keep going, trust yourself, just keep painting, and you'll get there. So I hope that uh, my little bits of advice uh, helps you guys and, and inspires you to keep you going. Um, that's what's helped me over the years is just talking to other artists and you know I, I I didn't read a lot of books I didn't watch YouTube I uh, just learned from through trial and error and that's how I really developed my own style too is not getting um, uh, caught up in what other artists were painting and trying to paint what they were painting um, but I could have learned a lot of things had I had YouTube way back then. Um, you guys are lucky that you've got all these artists, all of us artists here on YouTube. There's hundreds of us, if not thousands of us. And yeah, you're learning a lot from all of us. We all have something to offer. So you can see just slowly here as I've been chatting away, I'm just doing the same thing, cutting in with more white, black, defining more and more the pattern all these little markings and patterns building up the highlights one layer at a time now if you want to skip um, all of these layers you're gonna be left with more of a just black and white painting which is fine that's striking too it depends on how much contrast you want I do really enjoy the light gray shades that are in between all those mid-tones. Um, I guess you call it gray scale. I'm not really sure. I just, I like adding or keeping all those little gray tones in there, the shades of gray. I think it's really pretty in a black and white painting. Um, but if you don't want to keep adding all the layers to keep all those little gray tones in there, you can just take a hair dryer and dry it off quickly and then come right over top with your white and get to your bright highlights right away if that's what you want to do. You definitely don't have to take this long to paint your tiger. There's different ways to approach it and there's quite a few videos out for tiger paintings. Um, I hadn't looked before I decided to paint this guy and then after I did, I was curious to see, is anybody, you know, are there, I'm sure there's <laughs> lots of videos out there on how to paint a white tiger. Um, and I didn't see any like mine, so that was good. I don't ever want my videos to be like somebody else's. We all want to stand out and be able to offer something different. Um, but there's so many different cool ones out there. Uh, the Art Sherpa is awesome. Cinnamon Cooney, obviously, she's like the guru of of painting she's amazing and she's been around on youtube for i think i think six years maybe longer she's awesome she's got some really great tutorials i've seen on her channel anyways i'm just coming in here adding a little bit of gray softening in between my blacks and my whites and now i've got one of my flat brushes here one of my lovely patrons sent me these. Thanks so much, Lisa. I'm using these paint brushes every day in my studio. I'm going to add a little bit more highlights down to his stripe down here on the bottom right. Just wiggling with my brush. Little wiggles to create that texture. And then they'll get a little bit darker more in shadow right here I'm using my darkest a dark dark gray so just a tiny bit of white with my black now I've got my even tail fan brush this brush is so cool you guys you probably hear me talking about this one all the time and my uh, probably my last five videos or so I just got it just discovered it um, I don't know what took me so long and I got this one at Michael's Actually, this isn't even my even tail brush. This is just my regular fan brush, but it looked like it when I zoomed in, didn't it? Because all those, all the bristles were kind of sectioned off. But I am going to be using my um, even tail brush in this video, and it's a great one. So you can just buy um, the even tail fan brushes at um, your local art store. They have filbert ones that are like that too. So you'll see in a minute, they kind of look like 
um, a rake, like they trim off in between sections of the bristles so that you get that really even line effect. And they're amazing brushes to use for creating hair, fences, um, anything that you want to have, tons of little lines um, evenly separated or, you know, just there's so many uses for them. I love to use them for palm trees as well. All the little leaves on each palm leaf, it's very, very helpful and it gets the job done so much quicker. It can be frustrating using a liner brush to try and paint millions of leaves or hairs. There it is right there. <laughs> uh, it's such a cool brush. And I think this brush was, I was under $10. It's great. So I'm adding the final highlights here. Just around his face, making some of these areas a little bit thicker. All these little hairs, making this guy look 3D. And you can also use the corner of this brush too if you just want um, to have a little bit more control on one area. You could use the one of the little sections on either corner of the brush as a liner brush. So you can use it multiple ways. I should probably do a tutorial. Let me know if you guys would like that, a tutorial on um, all the ways to use an even tail brush. <laughs> Um, there are a lot of you guys that have never seen this brush before and, they've, and you guys have been asking me so that might be something worth doing. And I've got a lot of requests over on Patreon so I, I've got to uh, um, get those done first. And there's a lot of good ones there so thanks you guys for all your support and your requests over there. I'm going to define his ears a bit more here just because all the white is kind of getting lost. You can't really see... Um, anything there it's just too busy so what I need to do is come in with some more black here and then I'll add a few more singular hairs that will stand out much much better I'm gonna come around do a light very soft looking gray outline and I'm just using my little flat brush here again or a filbert whatever whatever works for you guys don't ever think that you can't do one of my paintings if you don't have the exact same brush I'm using or the paint colors. Uh, don't ever let that stop you from creating something. You just have to be innovative and use whatever you have. Gosh, when I first started painting, and I've mentioned this before, I was a stay-at-home mom of three babies and I um, just wanted to start painting and I didn't have any materials and you know we were saving money so and uh, at that point, I didn't even know what to go out and buy, but I just, we were doing a lot of home renos, and I found, you know, extra pieces of chunks of drywall laying around that we were just going to take to the dump or whatever, or not use, and it was, it was junk, and I just started painting on it, and I thought, well, this works, why not, and um, had a lot of fun doing that, and somebody came over one day, and they said, how much do you want for that? And I couldn't believe it. And I started selling my <laughs> paintings like that. And my painting journey just took off from there. Eventually started teaching in schools and getting called out and going out of town and just teaching wherever I was asked. And I did many, many um, paint and sip nights. But yeah, you can see how the hair is standing out much better now that I'm adding um, the black paint on the ears. But yeah, so it just goes to show you, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get good at painting or to be able to create um, something that you're happy with. You can use whatever you have laying around. And I didn't even have, I didn't have a studio back then, of course, and we just were living in a, 
a small trailer at the time and I painted in my tiny little laundry room on top of my washing machine and we had a really really bright light in there the lightning the lighting was good and that's all I needed I was content in there painting and and then I started teaching my kids how to paint and and uh, it was a really nice outlet So using a, my little flat brush here again, I'm just going to continue adding all these little details until we'll start adding that beautiful color to his eyes. Now we're going to be using turquoise. We're going to use a combination of the turquoise, the phthalo blue, and the titanium white. And I'll be doing a few layers um, because I really want really want his eyes to stand out that is the focal point for me that's what this painting um, is about to me is is the eyes the eyes are are the window to the soul and i loved adding that pop of color at the end to his eyes and it was the same way for my owl painting too it just that was that was so much fun. I think it's really fun working in, in black and white and then adding, just picking one part of that black and white painting to draw your eye to and add color. So here we are. We're ready to start the color. I'm going to do the first layer in just a second here. I want to make sure that I have the right shape for his eyes. So I come around with a little bit of black, get a nice crisp black outline there and I've got a little bit of turquoise so I'm just pushing twisting see how I push and twist gently with my brush to keep it nice and round you guys can use a little liner brush for this if you want and if you uh, are a little bit nervous about using this size of a brush now I've got my little liner brush I'm gonna redefine the white markings here let that turquoise set in a little bit Now here I just accidentally came down a little bit too low with that white, so I'm going to correct that in a minute. I'll bring back a little bit more of the black. So right in here, yeah, I just need to bring that up a little bit higher and add more black. Okay, so now with a clean liner brush, I've got my phthalo blue with turquoise. No white at all at this point, just those two colors. And see how pretty that looks? This is adding... A lot of dimension to his eyes. Then I wash my brush off and I use turquoise with white for the bottom part where it's going to be brighter. And then there's little dots for the highlights in his eyes. And then a little line on each black line, a skinny line inside of it. I just want to make that white part a little bit thicker there. Dabbing the turquoise and phthalo right under that white highlight and a little bit of black oops I just went over his highlight a little bit of black for his pupil I'm just going to do another highlight right down here again because that paint sets in and then it gets a little bit darker and duller so I go back a few times with that white and turquoise just to make sure that it's going to be nice and bright once it dries. So I'm going to work on his nostril area right down here make sure that I put a tiny little line in between at the bottom part of his nose and nostrils and I'm just using my smallest one of my smallest liner brushes here and this is one of my oldest ones. I always go back to it. I wish I could read the the name on it, the make of it, and find some more. So I'm going to go in between, or on either side of that line, with a bit of white. And then above the white patch, I'm going to come in and do a line right there. And then I'm going to add a bit of shadow. And that's going to make the... 
that part of his nose really stand out and look 3D. Add the final little white dabs of highlights to his eyes. And then come over here again with just a little bit more of the white to blend into that gray. It was just a bit too dark. So he's got a couple little whiskers right there at the top inside of his eyes. And I know I'm going to come in and wisp a few little messy looking curly kind of hairs in his ears that are going to show up a lot better now that I've got that dark gray underneath and black. Just using my long liner brush again. Great brush for creating all those long singular hairs. I'm going to redefine some of his whiskers down here. Then add a few more little ones down on his chin and his bottom lip. Some of them are a little bit longer and that one's a little bit too long so I'm just going to soften it and fix that. And just tap and dab a little bit of gray and white in there. And smush it around with my finger just to soften it a bit. So for the next few minutes I'm going to be adding the final touches to this painting and I'll let you guys finish watching this and I'll meet you here back at the end of this video. Okay, so as we come to the end of this video, I'm going to add the last few brush strokes. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me again today, and I hope you want to paint along with me, that you got inspired, and you have a wonderful day. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'll see you next time really soon in another video. Bye, everybody!